Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. We're so glad that you could uh, join us this morning. This is a very special day in the life of our church, as well as a special day in the life of our families. Uh, as we uh, confirm uh, 14 of our uh, young people here this day, um, you'll see there are, there are portions of the confirmation service uh, which are very similar to the baptism service uh, of which all of these children were, I shouldn't say children, should I? That's not. All these teenagers um, were uh, a, a part of. Uh, the questions that I'm going to be asking them, they're all going to be standing up in front and I'm going to ask them a series of questions. These are the same questions that are asked of parents when their child is baptized. But now the confirmants answer these questions for themselves. Uh, the same way that often a statement of faith is, uh, is, is read uh, during a baptism so that everyone's very aware of the faith in which we are uh, uh, baptizing uh, into. Uh, now the confirmands are, are reading their own statements, their personal statements of faith uh, before the congregation. And then uh, we'll invite uh, families to come forward uh, individually, one of, or you know, individual families to come forward uh, as their confirmand is actually confirmed, we'll lay hands on them, uh, and uh, we hope that uh, you know extended family, uh, whoever would like to be a part of the uh, uh, confirmation ceremony, is is welcome to come forward at that time. Uh, I want to thank uh, Kai for being our uh, pianist on this fifth Sunday, and thank Ken Matthews for being our uh, worship leader. Um, I do have a couple of announcements though uh, before we get uh, started again. I want to give a thanks. And a shout out to uh, Jennifer Dimmer and to the fellowship team. Last week, we celebrated uh, kind of the end of the program season uh, with a potluck luncheon. And uh, Jennifer and the fellowship team did an excellent job. Uh, the choirs, uh, the children's choir and the chancel choir sang. And it literally brought me to tears. It was, uh, it was so beautiful. Um, it was a great worship service and a great way to end our program season. Uh, but thanks to them for that potluck. Um, also, uh, if you came in through the narthex, you may have seen our adopt a bill board. Um, we uh, have, uh, beginning this month in May, uh, we have been putting some of the regular routine bills uh, that come and go month to month, week to week uh, on that board, hoping that folks would, uh, would adopt a bill for the month. It went so incredibly well that we actually filled up the board again with, uh, we've done May bills, and just in two Sundays, all of those May bills were taken care of. So the council got really excited and said, we know a good thing when we see one. Uh, and so they put on a whole new uh, uh, bills for the month of June. These are things like the electric bill, the water bill, the garbage pickup bill, the pest control bill. I mean, they're all the things that kind of nobody pays attention to, uh, uh, but that are necessary uh, to keep and to continue the work in the ministry of the church. So if you have not already adopted a bill previously, you are invited uh, to take one of those bills and uh, you can write a check, you can put it in the offering plate, or you can send it into the church office or drop it off, uh, however you'd like. We really appreciate your help uh, in meeting the uh, deficit budget which we adopted. Uh, the June newsletter will be out this week. It'll be sent out in an email. It'll also be available on our website, so uh, please take a look at that. Um, also, this is the last Sunday that I will be here for several weeks. Uh, I am going on a vacation to Scotland, so I will literally be out of the country. Um, but not Don Niederfrank, um, who this morning at the 8 o'clock service announced that this is the 45th anniversary of his ordination. So uh, congratulations to Don, but Don Niederfrank, one of our uh, members, is going to be leading the church services for those three Sundays that I'm away, as well as handling any kind of emergency pastoral needs of the congregation. So uh, congratulations to Don, and a big thank you to him for covering for me while I am away. Um, we will lift up joys and concerns a little bit later in the worship service before our pastoral prayer, so if you have a, a joy or a concern that you'd like to share with the congregation to invite others to... Uh, uh, to share in your prayers, um, we invite you to do so at that time. I also want to lift up birthdays. Katya, I, you know, when you found out that confirmation was the same day as your birthday, I'm sure you were like, yippee! <laughs> That's just what I wanted to do on my birthday. So Katya is celebrating her birthday, and uh, we're glad to uh, help her celebrate this morning. No, no, I, 
I, I have just embarrassed her. That is enough. For me. <laughs> Maybe after the service, the confirmation class can get together while we're taking pictures up front. You can all sing her happy birthday. Uh, May 30th, Sally Shirt Ehrlich has a birthday. May 31st, Don Clements and Marion Cooper have their birthdays. Uh, June 1st is Jackson Bergen, Barbara Sorley, and Dale Sainham is having a birthday too, so happy birthday to you, Dale. Uh, June 3rd, uh, Joyce Bria has her birthday. Uh, there is one anniversary this week. Uh, Gary and Joyce Bria are celebrating their wedding anniversary on June 1st. So again, if you uh, see these folks this morning, or if you see them later in the week, or you correspond with them by phone or email, please reach out and wish them a very happy birthday, happy anniversary. Uh, I think that's quite enough that I have shared. Uh, let's continue our worship with our piano control. <laughs> We are summoned here by our holy God, who calls each by name and gathers us together in the unity of Jesus Christ.
prayer of invocation printed in the book. O Holy Spirit, breath of God, be at work in our lives this day. Clear out the cobwebs of those of our minds and outpouring ideas. Fill us with the freshness of the name of our love. Cleanse and renew us that we may go from this place, ready to be your people. This morning, we have a story about 
the Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul and his co-worker Silas from the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 16 to 34. Paul's act of healing gets him in trouble and then helps him find new converts while in prison. One day as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a female slave who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God, who proclaim to you the way of salvation. She kept going for as many days for many days, but Paul, never much annoyed, very much annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out of her that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men, these Jews, are disturbing our city and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us, being Romans, to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet to the stocks. At about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. <clears throat> Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up, he saw the prison doors wide open. He drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered him, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him, and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up to the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. Our next reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 20 to 26, is from a section of John referred to as Jesus' high, high priestly prayer. The circular and poetic adds layer upon layer, layer upon layer of meaning. 
speaking about the unity of Jesus with God and with his followers. The passage can be found in the New Testament on page 111. Ask not only on behalf of those, but on behalf of those who believe in me through their word that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may, also, may, you also, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one, that so, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved me, and loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and those, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make, make it known as that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. Here ends the reading of the sacred text. May the Spirit add to your understanding of God's holy word.
Let's be in prayer. Loving God, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit present to each one of us. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the sacred text that is shared and the beautiful music that is played. We pray, God, that all of these things, including the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, might be pleasing and acceptable to you, God, that they might be found meaningful to those who are gathered here this day. May all these things work together to inspire us, that we might be transformed, changed, formed, molded into the disciples that you have called us to be. All of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, the text from Acts is uh, worthy of a, of a full sermon, but I'm not going to preach on Acts. Uh, I'm going to preach about confirmation this morning, because it's confirmation, right? Um, but the Acts text, if you ever want a, a, a biblical text that kind of illustrates a whole bunch of stuff, I mean, uh, Paul heals a woman, and uh, you've all heard the saying, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. Uh, so he heals this woman of a spirit that is possessing her and immediately gets beat up for it. Uh, he goes to jail, and if you've ever felt as if like your life was just kind of falling apart and everything was going wrong, uh, that is Paul. You know, he's in the middle, and he's been put in the deepest, darkest dungeon. Um, and uh, but even there, God's spirit is with him, and things, um, you know, new opportunities arise. Again, if you've ever felt like, man, I'm in a dead end place in a dead end time, and this is just going nowhere. And uh, the, 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 the text speaks of a hope, a hope that incredible things might still yet be possible, things that we can't even have imagined. Could Paul have imagined that the jailer who was in charge of keeping him in prison would actually become a convert to Christianity when Paul and Silas act in mercy and, and uh, they're the ones that are in the power situation because they have not escaped when the earthquake opens up the prison cells. It's a... It's an incredible story, incredible, wonderful story. But I want to talk about confirmation. I want to talk about confirmation. Confirmation is sometimes looked like as a graduation ceremony. Congratulations, you all have graduated from church. And just like at graduation time uh, from eighth grade or graduation from high school, you probably will not want to go back to high school. You will not want to go back to Thomas Jefferson Middle School. Um, you want to get out of there. Sometimes our confirmands act like that's what this is. And we will never see you again. That is not what this is. That's not what this is. Confirmation is much more like getting your driver's license. You all want to get your driver's license, right? Everybody wants to get their driver's license? No? Come on. Hands up. You want to get your driver's license? Okay, how many of you want to get your driver's license so that you never have to drive again? <laughs> no, of course not. That's not, you get your driver's license so that you can drive. You have been through this process of instruction, this process of confirmation. So now you can live out your faith here in church by coming to worship here in church by uh, experiencing and joining in the ministry and the mission of this congregation. So that you can live out your faith as you treat one another uh, with compassion and kindness uh, at school or at work. Confirmation is like getting your driver's license. Now, when I was your age, a very long time ago, I could not wait to get my license. Uh, I had a, a really good friend, Tim. Tim and I had plans, boy. When we got our driver's license, we had plans to get up to Boston. We were going to go spend the day in Boston. We were going to go down to New York City, spend the time down there. Uh, we were going to go to the beach. Connecticut uh, you know, has a nice shoreline. And, uh, you know, if there's ever a, a storm, the waves coming in at Nisquamacate State Beach in Rhode Island are just awesome. Uh, we were going to uh, go, uh, Tim's family had a, a, a cabin up in Maine. We were going to go away for the weekend up to Maine, bring our friends with us, have a really good time. <laughs> but sometimes uh, those don't work out. Once we actually got our licenses, we found out that uh, mom and dad still had the keys to the car. Uh, sometimes they didn't necessarily want us driving two and three hours away from home. Uh, sometimes uh, we just didn't have the money. It takes a lot of money to do all these things, to spend a day in Boston and New York. 
so many things worked against us experiencing, but we still got to use those licenses, whether it was to get to school, which was not necessarily fun, but necessary, important, whether it was to get to work, again, not necessarily fun, but important and necessary. And sometimes church membership is like that as well. We have, we have dreams, we have hopes, we have expectations about the ministry that we're a part of and the church going to solve the world's problems and bring justice and compassion out to the, to the wider world and community around us. But sometimes, sometimes being a part of a church is just making sure the flower beds look nice because when people show up, they want a church that looks nice. Sometimes it's as, as simple as the kinds of stuff that you did this year working in the, the food pantry, uh, working um, uh, at, over at Family Promise and wrapping gifts. Now, the people who go to the food pantry, the people who receive those gifts, probably don't know who you are, never realize that it took time for somebody to actually do the things that you participated in. It's the, it's the dirty work of justice. It's the dirty work of compassion and care and nurture for other people. But that's the kind of thing that confirmation helps you and allows you to do. So just like you would not get your driver's license so that you could put it in a drawer and never look at it again, you have given a Bible. Not so that you could put it on your bookshelf and never look at it again, but so that someday you might actually take the Bible off of the shelf and open it up and read. And read with understanding, read with knowledge, read with a little bit of insight into what the text is all about. Our hope is that just as your driving skills will improve as you drive more, that your growth and your understanding of the faith will, will grow and develop as you mature and as you get older. Confirmation is like getting your driver's license. This is not a graduation ceremony, but this is the first step on the rest of your lives. So welcome. We're so glad that you're here. We're so glad that you got through this process uh, with, uh, with resilience and with hope and with uh, hopefully every once in a while um, a moment of good times, um, maybe just a moment. But we're glad that you're here. And we're glad that you're going to be a part of our community of faith. Amen. If you would please join me uh, as we stand and uh, sing together our uh, second hymn. <laughs>
Remember the words of the Apostle Paul. You are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are equally citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus alone being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in Christ, in whom you also are built into it for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. And so at this time, I'd like to invite to come forward our confidants, Mia, Katya, Dylan, Amari, Matthew, Grant, Graham, Libby, Brady, Drew, Brooke, Avery, Ben, and Nick. Do your best to form a line. So I ask you, our confirmation class of 2022, do you desire to affirm your baptism into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, please say, I do. Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? Again, if so, please say, I do. Do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If so, please say, I do. I do. Do you promise, by the grace of God, to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. Do you promise, further according to the grace given you, to grow in the Christian faith, to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in all the world. If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. At this time, I'd like to invite the congregation to share in the prayers of the congregation, which is printed in the bulletin. Let us pray this prayer together. <coughs> Almighty God, who in baptism received these your servants into the church, forgave their sins, and promised them eternal life. Increase in them the gifts of your Holy Spirit. Grant love for others, joy in serving you, peace in disagreement, patience in suffering, kindness toward all people, goodness in evil times. Faithfulness in temptation, gentleness in the face of opposition, self-control in all things, thereby strengthen them for their ministry in the world, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Thank you. This time the compliments will be seated again in the front. So at this time, we're, uh, we're going to begin with the individual statements of faith. Uh, each of the uh, afternoons during the month of May, uh, after receiving uh, instruction and uh, discussion in class, uh, have written their own uh, personal statements of faith, uh, knowing that any statement of faith is a, uh, is a moment in time, and knowing that all of us uh, kind of experience the ups and downs of uh, our understanding and of our beliefs. Um, but this is a snapshot uh, at this moment in the lives of our confirmands. And so uh, we'll begin uh, with Mia. And then, so once Mia uh, reads her statement of faith, um, she'll come to the center. And I invite uh, any family or friends who are here to celebrate Mia's confirmation will come forward at that time and we'll uh, do a laying out of hands, which is a very ancient ceremony, uh, rite of confirmation. Uh, and Mia will be the center. Go ahead. To me, God's character is loving and understanding. God accepts us, forgives us, listens to us, and loves us, no matter what our pasts look like. I believe that Jesus died for our sins. I believe that he put us first and was willing to die so that we could be saved from our sins and have eternal life. My faith is important to me 
because it helps me shape me as a person. When I'm faced with a challenge, I know that as I get through it, my faith gets stronger. If my life is going well, I also know that this is because of the trust I have put into God. To me, the purpose of the Bible is to be a resource we can always use. The Bible is a guide that helps us to be better disciples. My faith helps me to serve my friends, my family, and strangers. It also gives me the guidance, strength, and bravery to do good for others and make the world a better place. Many people have helped me to grow my faith, including my parents, grandparents, and other family members, as well as my friends, pastors, and members of the church. Thank you. Uh, will we as family please come forward? Mia, may the God of peace sanctify you. I pray that you will always be preserved blameless to the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Go in peace. Amen. And uh, at this time, the cocktail, please come forward. God isn't a person, he is in everything. A little bit of him follows us around every day, like a ghost. He can't help everyone in the world at once, but he can forgive our sins. He gives us time to learn from our mistakes and right our wrongs. Jesus went through a lot of suffering to let us have our joyous moments. As the Son of God, he had a lot of responsibilities and did all he could for the people who believed in him. The Holy Spirit reminds us that earth is the true heaven, and he says that what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Even God doesn't ask for much out of humanity. The Bible is a collection of stories that may or may not have changed over time that teaches valuable lessons about all kinds of things. The church is a place for people to worship whatever they believe in with people who agree with them. I promise to continue my faith by giving to people less fortunate than I am. I will help people who need assistance and forgive people as long as they haven't repeatedly made the same mistakes. I will follow God wherever he needs me. Thank you. The Cotchins family, please come forward. Katya, may the God of mercies multiply grace and peace in you, enable you truly and faithfully to keep your vows, defend you in every time of danger, and preserve you to the end, and finally bring you to the rest with all the saints in glory everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. And uh, Dylan, you come forward. <laughs> Dylan's family, please come forward.
God, in the grace of Jesus Christ, you accepted this, your servant Dylan, through the water of baptism. We pray that you would nourish in him the power of your spirit, that he may serve you in the world all his days. Dylan, we pray that you would go in peace. Strengthen, O God, this your servant Amari. We pray that you would strengthen him with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in him your Holy Spirit, until you receive him at last in your eternal home. Go in peace. Matthew, may the God of peace sanctify you. We pray that you will pre be preserved blameless to the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Go in peace. Amen. Now, uh, Libby. Oh, I'm sorry. Do I skip? Right, I skip.
good decisions. I will use my faith to demonstrate kindness to others and follow a life that shines the light of God. Would uh, Grant's family please come forward? Grant may the God of mercy multiply grace and peace in you, enabling you truly and faithfully to keep your vows, defend you in every time of danger, and preserve you to the end, finally bringing you to rest with all the saints in glory everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Strengthen, O God, this your servant Graham, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever. Daily increase in him your Holy Spirit, until you receive him at last in your eternal home. Go in peace. God, in the grace of Jesus Christ, you have accepted this, your servant, Libby, through the water of baptism. Nourish in her the power of your spirit, that she may serve you in the world. Go in peace. And now pray tomorrow. Me, God of the people.
peaceful spirit that I look up to, and he helps me through tough times. I learned that Jesus came to the world to forgive us of our sins and teach us to be kind to everyone. The Holy Spirit gives us power and self-discipline. The Bible is a book that teaches us about the Earth's history and helps spread Christianity, and it provides us with stories to make us think. Our church is welcoming to everyone and has taught me to be accepting and kind. I promise to carry out my faith by helping others when I can, volunteering the community, and always trying to demonstrate good character. Thank you. The Brady's family, please come forward. Grady, may the God of mercy multiply grace and peace in you, enable you truly and faithfully to keep your vows, defend you in every time of danger, and preserve you to the end, finally bringing you to rest with all the saints in glory everlasting. Go in peace. Strengthen, O oh God, this your servant, Drew. Pray that you would strengthen her with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, daily increasing her your Holy Spirit until you receive her at last in your eternal home. Go in peace. Amen. Now, Brooke. O God, in the grace of Jesus Christ, you have accepted this, your servant, Drew. You've accepted her through the water of baptism. We pray that you would nourish her in the power of your Holy Spirit, that she may serve you in the world. 
All this we pray in Jesus' name. Avery, may the God of mercy multiply grace and peace in you, enable you truly and faithfully to keep your vows, defend you in every time of danger, and preserve you to the end, finally bringing you to rest with all the saints in glory everlasting. Avery, go in peace. O God, in the grace of Jesus Christ, you have accepted this, your servant, Benjamin, through the water of baptism. We pray that you would nourish him with the power of your Holy Spirit, that he may serve you in the world. Go in peace.
The church is meant to present the teachings of the Lord to the world. I believe that all of us are called forward to help one another through God, even by the church or the Bible. Throughout confirmation class, I've been able to see people help my disciples like us through our missions. Churches like us provide great help, and I'll continue to pursue that. Would that family please come forward? Strengthen, O God, this your servant, Nicholas, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in him your Holy Spirit, until you receive him at last into your eternal home. Go in peace. Amen. celebrate your presence in this household of faith. And so now I ask you, do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves the community and the world? If so, will you all say, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. And now let us the members of First Congregational United Church of Christ here in Port Washington express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. If you would please join me in the words that are printed in the bulletin under the welcome and prayer. We promise you our continuing friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, May we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, may your hand ever be upon your servants confirmed this day. May your Holy Spirit ever be with them and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word, that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Savior. <coughs> Amen. Um, would you all come and you see me again in the front? Um, I have uh, certificates of confirmation for all of the confirmands, um, and we also have a, a simple gift, uh, but an important one. It is a it is a cross. Um, when you were baptized, if you were baptized here in our congregation, uh, you and your family were probably given a shell as a symbol of baptism. Um, baptism was also the beginning of Christ's ministry, and uh, so a shell is, a, is an important symbol as you begin your life in the church, in the people of community of faith. Um, today we give you a cross. Uh, the cross during Jesus' lifetime was a symbol of death and torture. It was the early church that turned the symbol of uh, death into a symbol of new life. We hope that this day, as you receive this cross, that this will always be a reminder of your confirmation process and of your confirmation this day, uh, that you see your faith as a source of life, as a source of renewal, as a source of new hope. No matter what happens during your lifetime, know that Jesus walks alongside of you. And I hope that this cross will always remind you of that. Talk amongst yourselves for a moment. <laughs> 
to lift up joys and concerns um, before our pastoral prayer. I just want to share with you a couple of prayers that were lifted uh, at the uh, 8 o'clock worship service. Uh, prayers for Janet Benke. Uh, Janet's going to be having a hip replacement surgery on Tuesday. And so uh, uh, Janet and Merlin invite our prayers for her. Uh, Don Niederfrank, as I said earlier, celebrating uh, 45 years of ordination. And so invite uh, prayers and thanksgiving for that. Um, uh, Dale Noel, uh, some of you may uh, know Dale. Uh, Dale passed away yesterday. Uh, uh, Sherry Melcar let us know uh, uh, the Melcars were close with uh, Dale and his family. Um, and uh, so she let us know this morning that he had passed away. Um, may take us and invites our prayers for a niece of hers who's traveling through Europe. Um, and uh, we also had someone lift up um, the shooting that took place in Texas this week and uh, prayers for the other students and the teachers and of course all the families, uh, those who lost uh, loved ones uh, in this terrible violence. Um, so pray for them as well. Um, are there other uh, joys or concerns? Uh, and pray and thanks uh, for this year's confirmation class. It uh, really was a joy uh, and a privilege to, uh, to help uh, lead them and uh, to teach them this year. And um, are there other uh, joys or concerns that we can share together as a congregation? Ken. Uh, this is both a, uh, a request for prayers and kind of a, asking a question. Have you heard of Bruce Fox? Uh Yes. Uh, Bruce is a uh, home. Um, he was uh, going to be staying out in Newcastle, but uh, he decided against that um, and uh, decided that he would prefer to come home. Um, so he is home now, um, but uh, I think it's still kind of a struggle, um, but he's doing okay. I'm actually going to see him after this. So. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Will. So Bruce, uh, Bruce Lobbs, um, he had fallen at home and uh, was doing some uh, rehab work at the hospital, and then they thought about putting him at uh, Newcastle, um, but he really wanted to be home. Um, so instead he is there and uh, doing some rehab work, uh, work at home. Uh, anything else this morning that we can uh, share together? Uh, well, let's, uh, let's be together in spirit of prayer. Loving God, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the journey of faith of which all of us are on and we celebrate with the confirmation. Uh, young people, teenagers, we celebrate with their families uh, the point that they have reached this day. We uh, thank you for the way that your spirit works through our lives and works through each one of us. 
We thank you for the family and the friends who love us and support us and encourage us. We thank you, God, for the way that your spirit supports and strengthens us. God, this day we pray that we might truly be your disciples, that we might reach out to those who are in need, that we might open our hearts to those who are most vulnerable in our world, that we might do our part to be Jesus' own hands and feet at work in the world. Help us as individuals, help us as a community of faith to strengthen those who are in need. Gracious God, we pray for all those who have been lifted up. We pray for those who are awaiting surgery, and we pray for their, uh, for their safety. We pray for the skill of the doctors and the nurses that are caring for them. We pray for their swift and speedy recovery. We pray, God, for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. We pray for families in our own community of faith and the wider Port Washington Softville community. Our prayers extend across the country to the folks in Texas, to the folks in Buffalo, to the folks throughout the world that experience these terrible, violent shootings. Gracious God, our prayers reach out to those who are traveling this holiday weekend. And on this Memorial Day weekend, we recall and we remember those who have given the ultimate price, those who have paid for our freedoms, our liberties, by sacrificing themselves. Help us, God, to never forget Help us, God, to always bring honor to the sacrifices that have been given to us. Help us never to take for granted the things that we have, the things that we have been given, the things that have come from the bounty of your created world and from the system of government that brings justice to our country. Gracious God, we pray this day that you would be with us and hear us in silence as we lift our silent prayers to you. Loving God, we thank you. Whenever we turn our attention to you, we find that you are already turned towards us. You welcome us with outstretched arms. You hear our prayers. You listen for our cries. And hear us now, God, as we unite our voices and lift together the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord, be in
O God, to bring the fullness of life to those who are on life's shadows, to honor the grace where another's hurt and bruise, to honor the peace where another's violence and damage, to honor the heart where another's story contracts, to offer justice where another's power has oppressed. Amen. Let's uh close our worship by singing together Help Us Accept Each Other It's in number 388 in the Black Kindle.